2019 is 20 years on from when Manchester United won that fabled treble back in 1999, the only English team to have ever completed the feat. And we've seen plenty of documentaries about the goals, the games, but what about the journey? What about travelling with Manchester United home and away? Seeing United score six against Bromby, seeing Roy Keane's inspired performance against Juventus in Turin. And how magical was that night in Barcelona? Let's find out together. My name is Darren Webb, uh, 48 years of age, been following United since the day I was born. And you were there for 99 home and away? Yeah, 99 home and away, probably one of only 150, 200 people can say that, you know, I've got some great memories of the trips and obviously it finished in May with a great victory, you know, but what a few months it was to follow United then, when it was a great team. Yeah, lads, obviously, we beat them here 2 0 in the first leg. There wasn't a great team. Went over there. Pitch was terrible. The ground was terrible. Everything was terrible about the trip, about the cheap beer. That was the best thing about it, you know. And we got through. But it wasn't a great performance, but it was a, a game that got us through to the group stages. The next one was uh, Bayern Munich. Uh, which was which was absolutely colossal because it was a Munich beer festival at the time. Really? So it was good and I always remember the story about that was, uh, it was actually the day after the game. There was still quite a lot of us over there. And when the music stopped, we were singing United songs and over in the far corner, there's another group of United fans, but <coughs> didn't seem to join in with us back. So I marched over there to kick off with him. And there was, there was, there was Italian Reds couldn't speak any English, apart from one who could speak a bit. And he's he written down on the paper, if you stay here and sing us songs, we will buy you beer. So I literally didn't move from the side for the next day. Uh, great lads, but didn't uh, obviously know when he sing, but still in contact with one of them to this day. There were thousands of Reds in Munich, you know, I think a lot of people that felt lucky that the Munich Beer Festival was on. So obviously you got a good drink and you got a football match as well. And um, what, was it, what was the ground like? At that Old, point? aged, you know, it had been done up for the was it 74 World Cup. And obviously now Munich, the new stadium, we had been for years, but it had gone as a stadium. A bit like ours now, we need yeah. a new one. Uh, Still a great time to say you've been in an Olympic Stadium in Munich, you know, but it was looking old. Flew direct into Bromba, weather was terrible, you know, it really, it was like being at home. Yeah. Uh, very expensive. Uh, what, even back then? Yeah, it was something like eight or nine quid a pint then. Really? Yeah, it was very expensive. Uh, I remember <coughs> we didn't get an hotel room because we were flying back. Uh, early the next morning, we stayed at the airport. Uh, I remember being hit on the head by the cleaner because she wanted to sweep round where I was sleeping, me and a couple of lads, but great victory, 6-2, you know. I think we was two up after about 10 minutes and Giggsy scored another from a Wes Brown cross and Yorkie got one and Keno scored and Solskjaer come on and scored with his first touch. But a very easy victory against a very, very average Bromby team. And was it expected? Victory. Yeah, well you never know what you're going to find in your lane, but once we went two up in ten minutes it was game over. And we went over there and we should have won the game, but they had a bloke called Rivaldo who had different ideas, you know what I mean? At that point we probably the play, best player in the world, you know. But we went over there, we got the point we needed. Uh, great game, both of them were great games against Barcelona. Yeah, probably one of the most famous goals in that game was York and Cole. Yeah, it was a great goal. But it's like we were talking about that uh, up for that game. I think uh, blind that my ticket was 52 English pounds, and for the final, which was right at the bottom tier, was 14. Great, great ground. You know what I mean? People say it's crumbling, but it's still one of the iconic stadiums in world football. It's, it's, a, long, it's a long walk up, but so it, not when you've had about 15 pints in here. It doesn't seem that bad, like. But no, you say it is bad. When we won it in 68, I wasn't born. You know, my mother went to the final, she itched it all away with her mate, ended up blagging in in the Benfica end. You know, so it was a thing that I used to speak to her about, with was telling about the great night in 68 at Wembley and all that, and then you want to be part of it, you know. And obviously, <coughs> when you get to the quarter final, you, you can smell it a bit. You know, didn't think we'd win it, like, you know what I mean? Because there were some great teams in there who we actually eventually knocked out. 
obviously into the Milan game with the Simeone Beckham thing, what was going on from the World Cup. You know, obviously coming here and York and getting two great headers, you know, but still going over there and Ronaldo's back from injury yeah. and he had a great team, you know, and then we stood there. And I was saying in Milan that night, United was about 12,000. We took a complete end. It's probably one of the best United away ends I've been to in Europe. 12, in the we, we, had, we had we had all the bottom tier all right round. Say at least between nine and twelve thousand. There was loads there. Unbelievable. Was it nine, twelve thousand official? Was it just no? You I, it? I don't know if it was officially, but I think they did, had like an end which they couldn't sell, which they went on. I don't know if it was cash and all that, but we had. If you look at the pictures of Scholes' goal, how it pans round, we've got the full bottom end behind the goal. Was it? Was it a bit more heavy-handed in Italy? Yeah. Oh, it's unbelievable the, the, the place over there. You know, United fans don't help themselves sometimes, but. Some of the stuff's all over the top, but it's because of the old weird English, you know, and some United fans do go over the top. Uh, not as bad as what we've seen in Barcelona with United and Liverpool, but the Italian police, you just don't mess with them. Well, the Serim one, it'll somehow stick in my mind for, for a long time. Was, uh, obviously, we drew the home game 1 1, got an equaliser out of the death gigs there. And going over there, and if you look at their team, it was a class, class team. You know, Zidane, Davids, Deschamps, you know, Inzaghi. It was a class team. And uh, being in United, then going 2 0 down, and when they scored, they had, they had fountains behind the goal. And the Coleman started playing the Blues Brothers song. And I always remember saying to my mate, who come every round with me, we're not out of this. And he looked at me like to say, shut your effing mouth. You, we're 2 0 down here after 10 minutes. Couldn't get a paste in. And from there, if you look at the match, if you watch the match now, we still won five or six. Irwin hits the post, we had a good good chances, and then obviously a lot somewhat I'll always remember there was a segregation underneath the stands. If you was a back at the bottom tier, there was and obviously next to the Juventus fans and when uh, Coley put that and I've run into the segregation there and the police had it in there, I didn't feel a fucking thing. They was hitting me with batons and truncheons, I didn't feel a thing. And going back to Milan that night and drinking an Irish bar dry. So is that where was it? All the Reds stayed in Milan? A lot of them stayed in Milan, yeah, cheaper options. A lot of people flew into Milan, got part of the packages. You know, because there's nothing in that you're in, really, you know, where the ground's situated. The old ground was out, Stadio del Alpi was out in the middle of nowhere, you know what I mean? So a lot stayed in Milan. Uh, Milan. We had a great, great couple of days there. Great couple well, of do, days. Do you remember what the feeling was when the team scored? <coughs> was, it, was it still a sort of, ah, oh, we're out of this, but at least we've got one? No, I just thought that. Obviously. You're 2 0 down, and you've got the away goal as well. You're thinking you need a man minical against the top team. But Keane's performance that night just summed up the man for me. You know, he knew he wasn't playing in the final. He'd been booked, he must have been absolutely gutted, but he put in a performance like he didn't score that goal. It brought us back, back into the tie, you know, and it's fully deserved that he got that, that urge to make it 2 1. And Keane, all that night, just went from strength to strength. Going into the final, you're going back to Barcelona, you've already been there in the group stage, you're playing Bayern Munich, you've already played in the group stage. It doesn't not that it changes anything, but you're going into sort of familiar surroundings going into Barcelona. Yeah, of course, obviously uh, Munich was a great team, had some great players, you know. But I always had a little thing in my mind that would win, you know. Was it Busby's birthday and there was all things, what was connecting and then obviously uh, Sitting with the lads who had been with to most rounds, uh, two of us who went to every round, sat with him in the ground. Uh, didn't, get, didn't get the tickets together, but actually the seats next to each other officially, that's how mad it was, you know, we'd all booked our own stuff. And uh, just to be there, you know, it's dead surreal, obviously. I've never watched the full match over again, because there's no point, you know what I mean? Just watch the last two minutes. But uh, it's mad though, because the thing that's sticking in my mind about that is, there's three things. Is not actually seeing the goal, the second goal go in live, going back to my seat after going down about 10 rows for the celebration, thinking as the chair's gone up and I'm looking at the crowd, is that they're showing on the screen the, sol the Schellingham equaliser, and I'm not seeing that Solskjaer's put the ball in the back of the net, you know, which is a bit of a shit of light, but... And another thing is uh, going into... We're working at United, getting free tickets for the Amstel tent. And actually being in there on the Thursday morning while they're taking it down, refusing to leave. You know, taking the tent down, I still got an old key ring from it when Heineken was the sponsors. Uh, and the last thing what I was sticking in my mind was walking into the Barcelona train station and on the big screen seeing 
there playing it in the ground and just stood there absolutely steaming, just watching him at the ground and laughing. Uh, then obviously getting delayed in Barcelona for 10 hours and getting back to Manchester and missing all the parade. I'm not in the parade, but I think I should have been part of that with what I've just done yeah. and not being able to get a pint because every pub was drank dry. Really? Uh, but still great memories, you know. It's the greatest, you know, the players say it's the greatest week of their life. It's the greatest week of my life, football wise, and it's something I'll never forget. People say, I mean, people going about the final being the best game, but for me, the semi final was, you know, to get to reach there after so many years and not getting there and deservingly to get there, you know, and going into the, the old lady's backyard who, who, who basically, no one gives us a chance. You know, even I, the Reds would probably say now, listen, I didn't fancy us, but there's something there I just thought, and for me, this. <coughs> the turning point was Keane's, well not so much Keane's booking because it was too all then, uh, but just the performance of the captain, you know, because he could have crumbled that night, you know, but he just got the game by the scruff of the neck and thought, listen, I'm not going to go, but I'm going to let you use other ten players there, and he did. It was just a great, great night. I think it'll be hard for the team to do it again, you know, City nearly got there this year, probably ended up with the Aldi treble, you know. It's going to be hard, you need a lot of luck. We had a lot of luck, you know, that year, you know, especially in that final where they hit the bar about 100 times. Uh, <coughs> can it be done again? Very much doubt you need a hell of a lot of luck, and we, we did. United did have plenty of luck along the way, but you make your own luck, and that season was all about coming back against the odds, and United did that right up until the final. What a season it was. We may never see the likes of it again, and seeing those players lift the Champions League trophy in the new Camp as a fan will be the holy grail memory for any United fan who was lucky enough to be there that night. What a story it is.